Hello everyone, I am Nidanoski, and we are continuing our regalia of men and monarchs by completing our last requirement for chapter 4. It feels like it just began. We have 44 days left, perhaps that's coincidence. But we certainly do have our kingdom quest done. Let's find out what the feud has to um, offer. We're going to be going to the meet in place, and we'll find out more. Took three days to get there. Venture forth to the meeting place! What on earth? What happened here? This is disturbing. Proceed with care, young master. Is that What's a creature? This? That looks like a nose, teeth, eye. A rock of some sort? How do you think it got here? Perhaps it fell from the sky, disrupting the proceedings. I don't think that was the case. There's something odd about this rock. Uh, I finally managed to take a nap, and not a minute later, something comes out of the woodwork to poke me in the ass. Figures. <laughs> oh, hello there, little humans. Anything I can help you with? Wow! By the gods! Are you a dragon? Kay just fell over. <laughs> Actually, I'm an iguana. Once upon a time, I stumbled upon a smokehouse and ate too much bacon, hence my size. What the hell, guys? Of course I'm a dragon. What do they even teach you in schools these days? <sighs> so, anyway, what's up? Are you the one behind the wanton destruction here? Sure thing, boss. Those dudes with pitchforks came here on their silly wagons right on the doorstep of my home and shouted and argued and made a big stinking noise. I hate when they do that. My migraine starts acting up. I actually have a lot of empathy for the dragon right now, but if I'm playing from the perspective of K, I'm unconscious, so we'll continue. So I came out and politely asked them to move. Then they started shouting even louder. There might have been a rock or two, or ten, so I ate them all. Makes sense, right? How utterly vile! I know, the taste was terrible. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh, but... This cannot stand! Right, young master? Young master? <laughs> it appears my employer may have been frozen due to utter terror. Hey, whatever floats your boat, as long as he's not screaming. So, are you going to fight me or something? If not, I'm gonna ask you to leave. It's rude to interrupt a nap like that. Indeed we will. Have at you! What? Wait. Hold on for just a second. Yes, yeah, yeah, stop. Griff, no. Young master? This dragon doesn't exactly strike me as evil. Don't you think he's a rather amiable fellow? He's eaten innocent people. Well, yeah, but... It doesn't seem like they were very friendly in the first place. <laughs> I still say we slay him. That's a rather extreme measure. I'm standing right here, you know. You said that you asked them to move? Yup. I even tried chatting with that fancy tall-hatted fellow. That's how humans denote authority, right? By the size of their hats. Anyway, he wasn't too thrilled. And then they started throwing rocks at you? Usually, I don't mind. This stuff happens all the time. For some reason. Hmm. When the news gets out, people will not take lightly to all this havoc. Yet what happened was a misunderstanding, and there's no need for further violence. I'm not saying what he did was justified, nor that it was reasonable. But allowing both sides to duke it out will end extremely poorly. That is true. Well, what can I say? I can't deny I'm a grouch, boss. I just want to be left alone. Is I don't so blame bad? you. <laughs> I'm gonna just point something out. They talk about migraines, and the art of this is actually really neat. He is covering a single eye. Now, sensitivity to light is a common symptom of migraines, at least for mine. And it usually hits one side of the head or the other. Um, very rarely will it do both, and typically then it's migraine on top of a headache. But I, I do like this. I sympathize with the dragon. 
In that case, you need to work on your patience, Sir Dragon. Oh, don't be all smug, Griff. You are gonna kill him. What shall you do, young master? Well, we were supposed to negotiate, right? Then we will negotiate. I do not follow. So tell me, did you eat everyone? No survivors? What? No. I'm a dragon, not a pig. I have my standards, thank you. If you're looking for those other fellows, you'll find them in a village over the hill. Short walk, pleasant scenery. Uh, my thanks, Sir Dragon. Let's go, Griffith. Oh, I'm talking now, apparently. Thank you for coming on such short notice. Honestly, we were afraid you'd run away. Nah, don't mention us, uh, sir. Also, uh, you had some compelling arguments. Excellent. So we meet here on behalf of Mr. Tag, Mr. Bink, and, well, my name is Bakari. Mr. Bakari, as heir to House Lorne, the previous lords of these lands, it falls on me to pass judgment in the case for ownership of these lands. Judgment? What judgment? I thought we have already agreed to that. Huh? What are you kicking me for, Tag? What's with the face? Why are you... Please, proceed. Well then. Mr. Tag, Mr. Beak, please proceed with your claims. Okay, negotiations. Each party at the table. Tag Bink has a disposition counter reflecting their willingness to reach an agreement. I see. Each party begins with three to successfully reach an argument and proceed with the game. Each party will need to maintain at least seven points until the end of the proceedings. Throughout the negotiations, Gwendolyn, Elaine, and Griffith will offer advice. As those tip or as those tips will often contradict each other, it's up to you to make a final call. There are also other less readily apparent ways to win the negotiation. As such, you'll have to discover those by yourself. Keep your eyes and ears open. This is completely new. Well, it's my land! Oh, sorry, were you saying something, Tag? Nah, just go on. My family's been tending these lands for ages. I was there when the first huts were constructed, you know? Um, what? D don't you mean your ancestors were there? Uh, yeah, bad wording. Sorry. We were there first. I refused to let go of a premium, premium patch of land. Be it to my neighbor or Cranky Dragon, mostly because, you know, it's mine. No offense. <laughs> well, Mr. Tag, what's your take on this? My grand tells me these lands were hit pretty bad during the Crusades. When we moved here in the Rantelise, it was just wild, untamed soil. Nobody was around. So we took it as our own. You see, Grandma used to serve with the res uh, Relentless Vipers. Rent Rentlessian Vipers. So she uh, she knew how to tame the land. The, rel the Rentlessian Vipers? Mercenary Company. Fabulous poisoners, I'm told. And erm. Um, and unseemly family tradition. Not a dinner time topic. Still, the land, we cared for it for many, many decades. Imagine my surprise when Tag's um, family came a knock and saying we would step aside. It was our property, and you haven't really settled the hottest tract of the land. The plot's being wasted out there, no matter how you, you look at the facts. Yet you left it behind in the Crusades. Meh. And what was the purpose of these festivities? Well, we wanted to solve it once and for all. I guess, y yeah, in, in a sense, I thought it'd be nice to reach an agreement. I mean, we're civilized people, right? We both have a history here. Arguments like these help no one. Like, I don't want to move. Ever. Neither does my family. I don't think that'll change. But it'd be nice to have some decision to hold on to. You mean, it'd be nice to validate ownership. Is that what I said? Yeah, somewhat. Wait, I don't get it. You weren't willing to part with the land, nor to move out, yet you still willingly organize a celebration and very specific or, and very specifically, to negotiate this issue. Well, um, he clearly wanted me, uh, wanted to hand it over to me. I think the word negoti- or we should all really focus here is negotiate. And then came M Mr. Picari. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Wasn't a pretty sight. 
He munched a third of our guys. Look, I'm sorry, alright? They were loud, they were obnoxious, and they were disrespectful. Why do you people have to scream so much? You think I enjoy eating the fat and the old? Hey, I'm just saying. What's your claim then, Mr. Bakari? Like I said, I just want some peace and quiet. I'm an old lizard. Folks, if you leave me alone, great. I'll leave you alone too. I don't care about your shenanigans. But our kids! What about them? I mean, I'd be afraid an uh, imposing gentleman like you would turn them into a midnight stack, you know? Eh. Uh, why are we even talking about this? It's a dragon, and this dragon... Ow! Stop kicking me! Let's see. Take it slow, young master. Probe them out. Build up their goodwill. Remember, judgment does not like haste. Show them a that you mean well. You know, that we're all in this together. Well, this is a landmine. With or without the dragon in the equation. Tread carefully. Okay, so I have been trying to get this for a while, and I've ended up turning to a guide. This guide's available on Steam. The original poster was Jan, and several people posted. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to reveal some secrets. So in order to get that done, we need to work together. You don't say, well, I could swear that's why we came here. Ack! The lizard's right. We don't need platitudes. We need action. Come now, Bink. Hmm. Don't you come now, Bink me, Tag. I haven't spent centuries here to um, be fed a few glib words. Centuries? What do you mean? Er, uh, just merely a turn of phrase. Move along. All right, gentlemen. I think I need to know more. Eh, what for? Um, well, it's like we mentioned before. Bink's ancestral ancestors were the original owners of the surrounding patches of land. When war chased them out, my family moved on. Both of those were ages ago. It's home, or it's his home as much as mine. But mostly mine. Still, consider this. It's been generations. Can you really tell all my folks to pack up and leave? We're not some squatters. It's our toll out there. You know, I don't want to move if I don't have to. What? Hmm, no shouting. I react poorly to loud noises. Let's see. Hypothetically, what would it take for you and your family to move on, Mr. Tag? Uh, well, uh, what would it take? Well, but you see, do I have to? Like, at all? You mean, without taking into account this patch of land should be mine? My family's lived in the area for generations. I won't lie, we consider that contested soil to be ours. Without us, we wouldn't be having this talk at all. If only our little reconciliatory meeting succeeded. Hmm. Yeah, sure, blame the big guy. Heck, plant the big target on my forehead already. Wait, I don't get it. You're saying that things would have been different without Mr. Pakari's outburst? That the meeting between your families would somehow solve everything? But really what would it change are we not dis or are we not discussing about it now what exactly was different back then mr. tag oh great cat got his tongue oh manners mr. bink we are here to talk not to insult well all right Still, the way I see it, it'll take some time before you get something coherent out of Tag, though. I'm sorry for my uh, indecisiveness, Lauren. It's just, there's been so much weird stuff going on around these parts, you know? Hardly a time to keep a decent composition. Weird stuff? Yes, somewhat unexplainable, too. Our sheep have been vanishing for the better part of a year. When they do crop up, they've been drained of all the blood. Not a pretty sight, as you can imagine. Yeah. What? What's with the look? You're not going to point a finger at me, are you? Believe it or not, or believe it or not, but I have good authority that dragons do not infect drink blood, and certainly not of animals that are a tenth of our size. Uh, alright, I believe you. Well, I'm not convinced. Hey, whatever floats your boat. Hmm...
let's see. So I assume it's not Mr. Picari, but why would anyone attack your sheep? Given their uh, usual state, well, why does a psychopath need a reason? I heard a story about a guy who used to brew up Merrill cocktails. No reason, all but all because he was hooky or kooky. Why are we even discussing this? Darn it, dragon or not dragon, whatever. How is this relevant to the topic at hand? We're supposed to talk about the contested patch of land. Mr. Bink, why are you being so defensive? I'm not being defensive. This is getting ridiculous. I hope you're not trying to suggest anything here, Sir Lauren. Come to think of it, you do look rather pale. Have you, uh, have you always been this pale? What? Yes, I've always been like this. What are you getting at exactly? Nothing, uh, just, um, just thinking out loud. Hold on, something's not right. You doing this on purpose? Huh? What? Why are you suddenly lashing out at me? I'm a model citizen. I pay my taxes. I don't make trouble. I was more than willing to compromise. No, you said you never wanted to part with the land. But you were all too eager to organize a meeting that could cost you everything. Why? I wanted to compromise. Yes, to compromise. Not to take everything. It'd balance out. Life's not so black and white. You're not exactly the strongest personality either. I have a feeling Mr. Bink would just shout over you. I wouldn't! It's not my fault this land is mine and mine alone! Darn it! Case in point. You couldn't have hoped to talk him out in a direct confrontation, especially if he'd had some sort of advantage over you. All this time you've been trying to steer this conversation your way. But what But what way is that, Mr. Tag? What the What the heck, Tag? You can't be serious about this, Sir Lauren, right? Are you seriously suggesting I've been trying to implicate my neighbor into something um, dirty? Hmm. No, I think there's an unspoken undercurrent to this discussion and that you've both been trying to hide something. What? Huh? Well, isn't that interesting, to say the least? Uh, excuse me, Sir Lauren, but have you been buying too many bath salts lately or something? Well, I'll have to agree with Bing. This is a pretty sweeping statement. Is it really, though? Mr. Bink, Mr. Tag, you've left behind some clear hints, and now it's time to come clean. Let's see how this works. Now, I followed the guide that we found on the Steam user forums to reveal both tags and Mr. Bink's um, story. It was, I'm going to pronounce his name or try, Arnold Dindalau, who gave this. And he said that you can get to this several ways, but if you don't follow the steps I followed, then it will fail. So, supposedly, this is going to succeed. Sir, there's nothing, nothing to come clean about. You of all people should be careful with statements like this, Mr. Tag. Well, what's that supposed to mean? I'm saying right from the start you've had a hidden agenda that twists the entire point of this meeting. You never intended to negotiate with Mr. Bink. Your burning need to organize festivities was dictated by something else entirely. What? Remind me again about your quote-unquote family tradition? You're talking about his family's past with the Rentesian Vipers, aren't? Oh. Oh! You are trying to poison me! No! A line of master poisoners, are they not? I don't doubt somebody like you would have ready access to a poison. You said yourself that you weren't really all willing to part with this land. You also knew that you'd stand no chance, forcefully or otherwise, in direct confrontation. So you came up with the festivities, the peaceful summit. But that wasn't really the point, was it? I mean, it was a brilliant idea, really. A festival! Where else to poison somebody without raising too many suspicions? It could hide anywhere. Food, wine, excess can be lethal, right? But then everything went bully up. There was one variable you couldn't have predicted. One so utterly inexplicable that there was no way to salvage the original plan. A dragon. 
I try. That's... that's horse crap! We're in the middle of nowhere. If Mr. Bink were to drop in the middle of the festivities, nobody here would have the means or expertise to learn what hit him. Tell me, Mr. Tag, if I were to summon someone, summon someone competent from Scalia, what would I find? Tag? Come on, answer him! Defend yourself! Yes. What did you say? You're right, Sir Lauren. I did want to poison Bink. Don't. Don't gasp. Why are you so surprised? I may be a wimp, but no, I know injustice when I see it. This land wouldn't be worth Jack if it weren't for my family. My lifeblood! Was it worthy to try to kill a man in cold blood? You're a madman, Tag. A monster. Now you might want to hold your horses here, Mr. Bink. You're not exactly crystal clean in all this. Eh? Now it's true Mr. Tag was planning murder, yes, and naturally he's going to be held responsible for that. But there is a blemish on your credibility too, Mr. Bink. There was more than just one party being dishonest. Nonsense. I, I wear my intentions on my sleeve. That may very well be true. However, I am not talking about your intentions. Something about the way facts line up and how you spoke about yourself, the land, and your family. It really made me think, Mr. Bink. What? Think? What exactly? I think you are, at the very least, much older than you appear to be. And I've dealt with similar people before, in fact. I have someone in, or like you in my court. I think you're a vampire! What? 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 Well, that sounded stupid. But it's the truth, Mr. Bink. There's only so many times you can correct yourself after using I instead of my family before it becomes either a sign of mental illness or, well, you know. Also, I'm not sure if that was the original motivation behind Mr. Trag trying to poison you. No, I had no idea. But I'm sure there, um, there have been at least some weird things going on that could lend credence to what I'm saying. Like sheep being drained of blood, you mean. Precisely. Conjecture! Baseless conjecture! You... you cannot mean this! You don't need to be so defiant, Mr. Bink. Being a vampire is not a crime, and I don't care. That isn't why I'm prodding you, and you know this. However, you've been preying on the livestock of your neighbors. Lethally, if I might add. Was it to scare them away? To obtain the land on the cheap? Well, Mr. Tag turned out to be your match in the cunning department. Not that I approve. Talk all you want. I've yet to see a concrete evidence. See, I hate to recycle the same argument I used with Mr. Tag. One of my guests is an uh, experienced vampire, a neutral party with no stake in all of this, if you parted the pun. If anyone can judge these things, it's him. If you were to be brought before him for evaluation, what would be his verdict, Mr. Bink? Mr. Bink? Well, I might have lived a bit longer than I should, and I might have been a bloodsucker before. Big deal! I'll treat that as a yes. Oh, oh, Bink. But I have never killed a man, nor have I ever plotted to do so, unlike a certain someone here. I am not as depraved as you paint me, Sir Lauren. Like I said, I don't care if you're a vampire or not, Mr. Bink. I know that you've done wrong by your neighbors, and that is what you should answer for. So what happens now? Both of you have committed crimes, and I obviously can't ignore that. Before anything else happens, we should address this. I guess this makes you the winner by default, Mr. Picari. Well, darn. What? You're not exactly in a position here to argue, Mr. Bink, and you are free to pursue your claim, but not before justice is done. That includes you too, Mr. Tag. Well, I suppose this concludes our meeting. Uh, although the outcome was unexpected, nevertheless, I thank you for coming. It was certainly enlightening. Enlightening. All right, this meeting is adjourned. Congratulations, you've managed to come to an agreement with all parties involved. Well, we got an achievement. We completed that. Oh, <sighs> you mean you're going to talk now? I don't get to talk, Kay? You know, it's your game. You do what you like. Now that everyone has left and we can talk, that went uncharacteristically well, don't you think? Only because I used a guide. 
You can say that again, young master. Truth be told, I was honestly amazed by how you handled this ordeal. A satisfying conclusion without bloodshed? I just didn't think them hitting each other would do any side any good. Your father would be proud. I... Thank you, Griffith. Hey guys, I, uh... I just wanted to say that I'm thankful for what you've done. For smelly, squishy, noisy humans, you're alright. <laughs> Don't mention it. By the way, your smell, it's different than what I remember, but you mentioned you were of House Lauren, right? And this goes back, I, I don't remember what episode, but it was an early episode. I don't know this, I only looked up the guide to how to um, solve the feud correctly. But I do still suspect that Kay is not really of House Lauren. What of it? Nothing, I just thought, well, aren't you fellows supposed to be dead? Huh? I knew a Lauren once, upstanding chap, all regal, all diplomatic, eyes like bronze, words like silver, that sort of thing. Funny that it was you who came to broker an agreement. He would have done just the same. Can you tell me anything more about that Lauren? His name was Elrin Elrond. Something like that. In my youth, I was a brazen, hot-headed lizard. People feared me, but he didn't. He offered me a place to stay. This place, in exchange for a share of my old hoard. And before you ask, no, I don't possess that hoard anymore. It wasn't much, but as I recall, he was desperate. Something about paying off a debt incurred by his idiotic ancestor. That sounds oddly familiar. He wanted <laughs> I was to use that. that gold to marry into a wealthy clan from the land of Arlen and go all robber baron on their precious resources. And he almost made it happen. Ironically, he died at sea while traveling to meet his would-be bride. They never secured the deal. What happened? I do not know for sure, though I remember hearing stories about a storm of the century. Poor Sod must have paddled right into it. <laughs> Destiny is one terrible tragedian. So, did you guys ever pay off that debt? To be honest, we were really hoping you could help us with that. Sins of the past, still haunting the present. Poor, poor humans. All waxing poetic aside, I'm afraid I can't help you. I know nothing about your debt. Damn. However, I do know he was planning to visit his summer estate afterwards. Said he needed to show his ancestor's most prized possession to his brand new wife. A summer estate? Lady Elaine and Lady Gwendolyn have never found anything pertaining to a summer estate. Most prized possessions? Perhaps this is where the treasure vault was built. Sir Bakuri, do you know the location? Uh, sorry, boss. We'll have to investigate on our own then. You have our greatest thanks, noble Sir Bakuri. Good luck, little humans. Well, you know, that happened, and I feel bad for how it ended. But, yeah. So our party leveled up. Yay! Let's continue this path. <laughs> I could use follow up. Follow up wouldn't be that bad. Not really a fan of, of stopping power. But what would I give up? 30 shit? No, 3% damage? No. You know what? It, it's not really worth it. I don't really use to attack. Let's get rid of that. Okay. And you know what? Before we upgrade, I don't think we're going to be doing more battles. At least not right now.
I, now that we have both of these worked out, I kind of want to upgrade some things. So... Let's go talk to Alice. Yeah, sure, Where we'll spend some go? time. Okay, so we get to spend the day with Alice. And we're just mainly unlocking some things. I'll also want to spend some time with Esther. Which I am grateful to do now. Where is Esther? Are you going to be down? Let's check downstairs. Yep. You know, I was actually... Or this town is very different from my place at the academy. I was expecting way more dust and old men. Having said that, I was wondering... Could you show me around? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Esther's really awesome. What a charming place, you know? It's good to see some sunlight for a change. Back home, I spend so much time at workshops that the sun becomes quite a commodity. What a smugly city you've got there, Kay. I'm glad to hear that. It's nice that you're enjoying yourself. I am. It's nice to do something different for a change. Although I won't lie, before I left in the middle of something, um, big, I was hoping to continue my work here if it's not too much trouble. Um, sure. Machines can do the work. <laughs> I'm a clock freak. I love clocks. To me, they're both the essence and the pinnacle of engineering, and first and worst, last word respectively. All the springs and sprockets and oscillators, the crux of all machinery. And they're just cool like that. <gasps> the fact that they're used to measure something as ephemeral as time only adds to their charm. Think about it. A human device that measures time itself. How crazy is that? Well, when you put it that way, yeah. It gets better. Apparently time itself is not, in fact, an abstract. Back in the um, time of the first men and the old Inkshin, there existed a clock that could control time itself. The Aeon Clock, the mechanism to end all mechanisms. Okay. <laughs> that sounds like a... Wait, did you just blush? Darn right I did. How can we call ourselves inventors if the greatest invention has already been made and... And the horror forgotten... Hence, I've made it my a life mission to reconstruct the Aeon Clock, one step at a time. We'll be able to control time itself! Again! <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was hoping you'd say. So, with your permission, Kay, I'll begin making it happen. One day we shall be Time Kings! Definitely not Time Lords, that would be a different thing entirely. Hmm, that doesn't sound quite right. We shall be Time Counts! Time Lords? Ah, that's much better. We sh oh, I guess we're gonna be Time Lords. Algebraic! <laughs> How many pop culture references is she gonna make? Alright, so she's gotten her first. Which says, Tinker can no longer spawn mines. Um, the remaining effects now affect every eligible target in the- Oh. Ooh. What does the ultimate Aeon Clock do? Aeon Sup now costs one authority point to use. Okay. Maximum shields. Alright. Let's see. Who else can we bug? Well, let's go bug Theo. Oxford, isn't it? Wonderful. Yeah, let's spend some time. Okay, we spent the day with Theo. Really, we're just trying to procure upgrades. Could talk to Esther again. There's Shichiroji. Hmm. Not sure about spending too much time with Grin, but I don't think I've spent any with him. So let's go ahead and do that. <laughs> mm 
Maybe I have actually. Yes. <laughs> All right, yep, we must have done it, and I'm just not remembering it clearly. That's okay. Plenty of time left, plenty of people to talk to. That said, let's check out our personal bonds. So Alice is ready for hers. Diego's ready for his. Esther needs some work. Gren is ready for his. Griffith needs some work. Hoksun is ready for his. Shichiroji needs some work. Levant is ready for his. Okay, she needs some work, but honestly, I really should be working on hers. And that's the one I really wanted. Is the Unbound Fury. Now he's ready, and his upgrade, Mind Bullets Captivating Gaze no longer requires the target to be within Leo's line of sight, however, Rage is reduced by one. He's ready, increase Gale Dance's range. Alright. You know Let's go ahead and talk to Signy. We'll get hers going a little bit more. The duckling approaches. Okay. We keep moving. Lilka's available, and again, we wanted to make sure that she was upgraded. What can I get you? Quick, quick, quick! And that way, we'll increase all of the money we get from here on out because I still say we have a bit of a money problem. Are we able to? Upgrade her bond. Do we have her in where we need it? We do. So once again, we'll chatter up. What can I get you? Quick, quick, quick. But then again, I suppose coconuts don't migrate, do they? Eh, what the hell? Were you even listening? Oh, I'm sorry, but... What's with your dad? He seems pretty zoned out today. More than usual, you mean? Well, yeah, you spend time with him, you begin noticing these subtle changes. I know, right? But I don't know, I think he's been like that since he got that letter. Huh? A letter? Yep. Yeah, it arrived to the day before yesterday. Dad seemed pretty concerned to even see or, or see it being delivered. See, we don't get much mail here, or rather, not at all. Let's see. What's inside the letter? I don't know, he keeps... Hogging it to himself, you know? And he doesn't want to share. Oh. Papa? Oh, my. Hey, Papa, is everything okay? Why did you punch the wall like that? Are you upset? Please try to calm down. Oh, my. You look so miserable. Please. Mr. Lilka looks at you with uncertainty in her eyes. Let's see. Are you all right? Mm. Thanks. Okay, take care of me here. Oh, and we're almost to the next level. So we're increasing all money sources, and we can... Yeah, I think we do definitely want to get that. Um, they're not available, so what we're going to do, actually, is make sure that we have their inn fully upgraded. If we can afford it. And maybe we can't. But I sure want to try. Alright. Construction complete. Uh, 
All right, so we should be able to upgrade her all the way, but we only really need the next lot. So, yep, she's available. So it should take two more days. This one is just going to be a time passer. And then this next one, we're going to get the much needed oh boost. You remember us, don't you, Baz? Mm. Well, the coins don't forget. Especially the likes of you and your friend over there. Mm. Huh. He was right. Bad over. Shut it, drunkard. Even the battle, or even the battle. And you do what? You get soft and you decide to grab a kid to think better of yourself? Eh, did mm. you? And guess who should shoulders the blame? That's right, us. But the good old captain never tolerated insubordination, did he? Cowardly lot, he would say. Guess what happened? We were your unit, Baz. We had it all. Guns, gold, glory, and you ruined our careers forever. Right there. Straight into the cesspit. And what did you get in return? A brat. A worthless parasite of a dwarf and an empty watering hole in the middle of Nowheresville. Was it worth it, Baz? Was it? Go away, Thuggershot. You have no right to be here. Oh, I swear if I were fitter and younger. You do what, dwarf? Huff in my knees? Hey, Dad, sorry, where. Uh, Dad? Oh, for the love of. What the heck? Ah, is this your kid, Baz? And who are you? Another orphan in Baz's little menagerie? I don't know you, but I demand you leave now. Tough customer, eh? Well then, my fearless friend. Are you sure you have the weight required to posture like that? I'm pretty sure he's Lord... Or, I'm pretty sure he's Lord King of House Lauren. You know, the ruler of these lands? What? You've got to be joking. He's not exactly wrong, though. Can I help you? We are the mercenaries of faded coins. At least we used to be. Now we're stuck doing grunt work in the dump of this world. All thanks to your friend here. Thank Baz, Sir Lauren. Thank him. Wait, what? Was that, well, ages ago? Again, what the heck? Incidentally, Baz was really hard to find. Almost like he didn't want to be found, you know. But when we did, we decided to have our fun. One quick rumor here, and an anonymous letter there, a leaflet of the faded coins, and it worked, I reckon. How do you feel, Baz? But now, we finally have his splendid opportunity to explain everything between ourselves. Like men. No more hiding, Baz. I'm gonna need a freaking prick. This, can, this can't be happening. It's so pointless. No, stop. Leave Papa alone. Papa, <laughs> hey, Baz, think your daughter would mind if I told her about some of your more juicy war achievements? Mm. Oh, finally found your marbles, big guy. Come then. You took everything from us, yeah? Now we'll take everything from you. Please. Papa, stop. Just, what, why? Why are you widows even doing this? Leave my dad alone. The situation appears to be approaching critical mass. Alright, let's challenge okay. him to a duel. Not so fast. Let's see, sir, sir. What's your name again? Ah, uh, whatever. I challenge you to a duel, sir. What? I'll have you know, I am a great warrior of great renown. I'll strike you down and mow you over like a great land mower? Yeah, that's right. You? Rubbish. Or is it? There will be no mercy. Justice shall be swift. And 
just? <laughs> He's serious. Oh. Screw our revenge. Let's go. What? But the coins. Shut it. You and the dumb coins nostalgia. Time to find a proper job, lad. Oh, wait. Wait for me. Yeah. <laughs> Glad that's over. Papa, are you all right? <clears throat> that's what you were worried about? Those wackos from your old job? It doesn't matter. Why should it matter? You're here now, and you have me. Cheer up. Business is a wasting, right? Thanks. You too, mister. Thanks for being here. I guess being important Sounds helps. Sounds good to me. A happy ending for once, eh? All right. Personal bond has gotten stronger, and we're almost to here. Admittedly, having more money would definitely be worth it. It would help with a lot of our kingdom bond, our kingdom quests. But I think at present, this is a great place to save and move on to the next episode. So if you've been enjoying this and want to make sure you catch more, stay subscribed. If you want to let me know whether you like it, whether you dislike it, let me know with a thumbs up, thumbs down, or in the comments. Always helps if you share. In the meantime, I'm Nyadonoski. As always, have fun. <laughs>